All right, good evening. I'm Nick Garrett, I'm the head football coach at Riverside Military Academy. Today we're going to talk about recruiting one-on-one -on -one from a college perspective and then obviously from the high school perspective as a coach, as a parent, as a teacher, as a mentor, educator. So we're going to canvas a lot of different areas, not for just football, but just sports in general. I want to thank Chesty High School Coach Pineda for help, uh, helping with hosting and uh, putting out that information. And we'll get this film to send out so you guys get the opportunity to see it for those that have missed it because of spring ball and, and other obligations. Uh, next slide. Uh, where I've done it, I uh, started off at Grayson University as a player, um, as a coach. Uh, went on to Kansas Western University. From there, I went to Wyoming High School, my alma mater. Uh, then spent four years at East LA College. Um, won a championship there, won a whole game there. Um, and while we were there is really how I figured out how to navigate through recruiting and we had a hundred percent placement rate out of the each years we were there from having 35 sophomores to 25 sophomores whatever the case may be we really figured out how the recruiting process works and really how to get them not only in but also out. Uh, and then I went on to Division II Western New Mexico had some great success there. Um, two of the kids that I brought in broke all the RMAC records in that division, one of them uh, is number two nationally in, in passing and career end in a single season. Uh, went off from there to Santa Clara High School, private back home in California. And from there, got the phone call to come out to, to Georgia football where it's at. So now here at Riverside. Next slide. Um, how the numbers work, uh, when you really look at it from a, from a coaching perspective, from not only just college, but high school, and as a parent, really got to pay attention to the finite details. One out of 15,000 college students will play pro. But when you really think about that, that's a very, very, very small percentage. Okay? Uh, moving forward, you know, over a million kids will play high school football each year in the U.S. Uh, one in every 5,200 college players will have the opportunity to become professional. Obviously, it's less than 1%. Uh, out of the uh, almost 73,000 uh, college football players, 256 get drafted each year. Okay, so if you're gonna break that down from 1A, 1AA is 2.6, 1.8 Division 2, 2.4 Division 3. So a very, very minute percentage of, of kids actually get that opportunity to make a career out of it. And once you get there, it's all about keeping your body in great condition and surviving as much as possible. Okay? Uh, the biggest thing is is young athletes need to understand as early as, as middle school and the high school going on before they head into college is the value of having a degree. Okay, because not everyone is, is designed or is going to be able to play pro ball. Next slide. All right, so how the recruiting territory works. Okay, this is just an example of, of what colleges, Division I, A, FBS have won each state. But the biggest thing that people have got to take away from this is each school has a, a specific target area. Okay, so for instance, if we're here in Gainesville and I got a young man that's interested in, in Oklahoma, I'm not going to directly contact the head football coach at Oklahoma. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the front office, the recruiting office. I'm going to ask who's in charge of Hall County, Georgia. And he'll give you a specific name. And now off of that name is the person and your point of contact. Because if not, it's just going to get lost in the show. Next slide. Okay, this just gives you kind of an idea of the community college breakdown. It's very, very important. So as a high school kid, not only are you competing with other high school kids in your area, in your state, in the United States and the nation, but you're also going against community college kids. So out of 143 community colleges, each roster may carry about 80 to 120 players. So you gotta keep that in mind as well. So it's not only so much, hey, as a high school kid, hey, I'm just small-minded with just where I'm at, but you also gotta be thinking bigger. I gotta comp compete against 3,000 other running backs, not including the other couple hundred from community college. Okay, so as a parent, as a coach, as a teacher, as a recruiting guy, you got to understand how the numbers all work, okay? Um, if you end up going to junior college for whatever reason, there's options for you. California itself, there's no scholarships available, no housing available, but there are other community colleges if you had to go that route for whatever reason, if you were not a non-qualifier, there are options out there that will scholarship you to attend. All right, who am I up against? Okay, as I said before, Okay, other high school players, okay, you're going against millions, millions and millions and millions of kids 
all play that position, all play quarterback, all play offensive line, all play receiver and running back, okay, at different age levels. Okay, so if you may not get an offer right away, doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to happen for you, okay? Just understand the process, be patient, get your information out there, attend as many camps as possible. Prep schools are all across the country. For those that are not qualifiers, prep school is an option. So uh, young student athletes can now focus on their test prep, SAT, ACT, scrimmage some JC teams, maybe scrimmage Air Force prep team, some of those military prep teams to get some film and not lose any eligibility. So that is an option. It does cost a little bit usually typically to do that. That is an option for people. Uh, JC wise, okay, all right. We can just say realistically there's almost 15,000 JC guys that you're competing against as well, okay. Now on top of that I missed active rosters, okay. What to say there's 100 guys on a roster, okay. Typically, a program can bring in 25 up to 50, depending on what level. So you're competing against those guys on that roster that've been in the system, all right, as a young high school kid, okay. But if you look across the board, okay, some of the top programs in the SEC and ACC, there's very, very few freshmen that play right away, and it's for a reason. That level of football, your body is mentally, uh, physically not there yet. Those guys are developed, so you're going against those guys, okay. Grad transfers, that's another one. Okay. We could just say, for instance, 130 FBS, 125 SES. Okay. One to three get picked up, you know, that's quite a few. You're now you're competing against those guys as well. So a high school quarterback up coming in, they got three. Okay. They don't feel during spring ball, during their evaluations, they can cut it. They can get a grad transfer to come in, met all the requirements of the four year. What a grad transfer means is if I desire to have a particular master's that maybe Wisconsin doesn't have, and maybe Minnesota does, and they have an opening with football, I can now take graduate level courses, be a senior, okay, while I'm there, and now you compete against that as well. So you could be coming into a high school kid thinking at quarterback, I got an opportunity to play right away, and you're going against four guys. All right. All right, what's focused on, okay? Know your student athletes. Know what kind of character they have. Know their academics. Know where they fit test score-wise. Okay, make sure they're a good fit for whatever schools you're selecting. Okay, athletic evaluation. Us as a coach, we get googly eyes. Okay, a lot of coaches think their whole roster is Division One. Very, very unrealistic. Okay, very few kids are Division One A FBS kids. All right, so understand and be open-minded to change. If maybe a kid's not a great fit in college as a as a tight end, but more as an offensive tackle or maybe guard. Think about moving that kid for those opportunities down the road, okay? Allow advice, allow constructive criticism, okay? And, and, and know that, take it in wholeheartedly. Don't ever take the information personal from college coaches. They're the experts. They're the ones that are going to invest in your student athletes. Take it and say, hey, okay, well, uh, with this particular kid, I need to take a look at this, okay, as far as allowing him to help him for his future, all right? Know the levels of colleges, okay? FBS 1A. Okay, they have to be an exceptional talent. One double leg might miss the height requirements, might be a step too slow, might be 10 pounds too heavy. Okay, there's still opportunities for you. Obviously, NCAA D uh, Division II, they give full ride scholarships up to partials. Same with NAI, NAI can stack scholarships. D3, they can package just as good as scholarship schools. Okay, NCAA D2 and NAI. And it just doesn't say athletic scholarship. Okay, next slide, thank you. Okay. Uh, so these are some of the, the do nots of as far as college recruiting. Uh, me, myself, I've done recruiting coordinator at multiple levels, and these are kind of the, the format we utilize uh, at some of the smaller schools to help our coaches understand what to do and what not to do. Okay, don't recruit out of your area. If you've got a specific area, unless the coach says, hey, this is a kid that you need to go after, their specific areas they're designed to, and that's the coach that's going to be making contact and reaching out. Okay, um, if a coach starts talking money, Okay, you want to kind of steer away from that. If you're a coach, have a promoted kid. Hey, yeah, we're going to give you a full ride at Lenore Ryan. Okay, that's not how it works. You need to get it documented, put down on paper. This is what we can do. This is what we can't do. Okay, uh, don't allow coaches to set up vis visits without talking to you as coaches and the parents. All right, a lot of these coaches now are going directly to the kid. Okay, that's going to put you in bad shape. They can overwhelm the kid, give him bad information. That information gets misinformed to coach. Then it gets misinformed to parents, okay? Make sure as a coach you're actively involved in that entire process. Make them go through you, and then make sure they're communicating with the parent, okay? Uh, coach offers starting positions, hey, you're going to come in right away, you're going to be my guy, okay? But the school already has four quarterbacks. 
or you're going to be my starting middle linebacker. But well, the school has their five deep at my back. So be very careful some of that information these coaches are giving to these kids because it can be very misleading to try to get them to come. Okay? Uh, don't forget to ask those qualifying questions. Hey, coach, what's your graduation rates? Okay? What's your retention from your freshman year going into your sophomore year? Okay? Uh, financial aid. Okay? Do you guys give out? What kind of aid do you guys give? Okay? What kind of loans do you guys give? Are you guys full athletic scholarship? Are you full academic scholarship? Is it full tuition? Okay, make sure you ask those questions. When it comes down to brass tacks, as a parent, you want to know, hey, each year I'm going to be paying this, or each year I don't have to pay anything, or each year I'm going to get my student athlete is going to get a little bit of money back. Okay, ask about the coaching staff. Coach, how long have you been there? Three or four years? Fifteen years? How long has your staff been there? Because if, as a head coach, he comes in and says, hey, I've been here one year, and all the staff is relatively new. Okay, you don't know how long he's going to stay there, or you can have a coaching staff that's been there 15, 20 years, and their coaching staff is about 95% retained each year. That's pretty good. Okay? As a parent, I can know I've got peace of mind when I drop my kid off to college that that coach is going to be there for a long period of time. Okay? The last thing you want to do is send your kid off to a school not knowing what the, the staff stability is like. They get a coaching change. Okay? Your kid is a triple option quarterback. They're now a spread no huddle offense. It's not going to be a good fit. Okay, uh, go to the next one, coach. All right, recruiting evaluations, okay? Every single coach wants to go after the top kids, okay? Top kids, for most people, are going to say, oh, it's a five-star kid, or it's a four-star. I want to go four-star. Well, a lot of people don't know, for instance, Jake Fromm was a three-star kid. Jake Fromm is starting quarterback at University of Georgia, one of the top programs in the nation, okay? Don't get caught up with stars, all right? Uh, big thing coaches want to know, is the kid eligible? Okay? If a kid's a 1.8, has a 12 ACT, but can dunk a basketball and averages 45 yards to catch up wide receiver, that's not a kid that they can offer. Okay? They want to know where you're at. If you're at a 3.0 level or higher, okay, let you know a kid has break time management. Uh, on top of that, their test score, are they 18 and up? Okay? If a kid is, is a 4.3, has a 36 ACT, that kid right there lets you know as a coach, hey, I can invest in that kid. That's a kid I can invest half a million dollar scholarship into. This is a kid we can count on. He'd be a good fit for our program. Those are the type of kids coaches are looking for. Okay? High academics. Okay? On top of that, if they're an exceptional playmaker, all right, that's, that's amazing too. High character, high integrity. You can't stress it enough. Okay? You don't want knucklehead kids. You don't want cancerous kids. It's going to pollute your program. It's going to, if anything else, it's going to put your program in the wrong direction. So you want those kids that are going to do the right things on and off the field, in and out of the classroom, in and out of the community. Okay, so this is how the college evaluations for the most part has to change. Okay, football IQ. Okay, do they know where they're going? Do they know alignments and assignments. Do they know checks? Do they know audibles? Okay, as a running back, all right, do they know how to read B A A B or the A to A gap as a back or Mike backers. Okay, do they understand fullback keys? You know, guard keys, blocking scheme keys. Do they understand how to drop into zones? Okay, do they understand where they're their responsibility is on the field. Very, very important. Fluid movements. Can they get sideline to sideline fast? Can they attack downhill fast as a linebacker? As a DB, can you flip your hips and run with a wide receiver? Okay, as a quarterback, can you throw that back shoulder ball? Can you throw that deep comeback, that deep out, that home run post? Okay, most quarterbacks are throwing the short game and intermediate. A lot of them can't get that vertical ball. That may affect recruiting. Okay, uh, hips. Fluidity in the hips is a big key for coaches. If it's a lineman, a D lineman, uh, even down a running back or receiver, the stiffer the hips, the higher the risk of injury. The stiffer the hips, the poor direction that they can change. So if you have a receiver in college runs a legit 4-3, you got stiff hips as a DB and run a 4-6, more nine times out of ten you're going to get beat. Okay. Uh, as a coach, I never got caught up on size. I got caught up on fit. I didn't have to have 6-7, six, 6-6 seven, six, six offensive linemen across the board. There's good quality linemen that are 6-2. That are 255, 260, they run a 47. That's a third level blocker. That's nasty as all get out. That has great grades and, and the right fit for us. Those are, those are kids you can scholarship. It's not always about, yeah, I need to have a quarterback that's 6'6, 235, that can't scramble, that can throw 80 yards down the field. And when there's other quarterbacks like Kyler Murray, right, that think 5'10, 5'9, extremely dynamic, first pick of the draft, win the high school. Okay? Beats out all measurables because he's the best fit. All right?
Next slide, please. How to speak to college coaches. And I'm only going to give you a couple pieces of this because it's the most important. Be respectful. If you're a high school coach, listen. Okay, I can't stress it enough. If you're a parent, listen. Okay, if you're a teacher, mentor, listen. Don't come bombard the coach with all this information. Hey, coach, this is your guy. He's going to start for you. I followed your program. I saw you guys played a tight game against Alabama. This kid will beat out that right guard that you have, even though he's an All-American first-round pick. Uh, X, Y, and Z. When they come in, allow them to talk about what they're doing, direction the program's headed, how maybe some of your kids might be a fit. So it will let you know right off what they say, hey, we can already eliminate a few of these names. This kid right here, Coach, off of what you said, would be a good fit for your program. Okay? Uh, be honest. Be as honest as possible. Don't say an offensive tackle 6'6", 285. When he walks through the door, he's 6'2", 205. Okay? That makes you look bad, and it may stop that coach from coming in and recruiting the next year or the year before after that or the year after that. You just want to be as honest as possible. Hey, Coach, he, he's 6'2", with a good pair of cleats. Okay, he's, he's 275 after a good lunch and dinner and maybe a, a bowl of cottage cheese. But be legit as possible so when they come in, they're not surprised and it doesn't, you don't lose any credibility and mess it up with your kid. Okay? Again, be open to criticism and advice. So if a coach says, hey, this kid needs to gain about 20 pounds, he needs to get down to a 4'6", needs to get some long snappy time, he needs to cut about two tenths of a second off it. Take that information and apply it how you want. But if he's telling you and, and right there in front of that kid, in order to play at this school, maybe at Georgia Tech, this is what he needs, okay? It's up to you to activate that, okay? You're the one that's an advocate for that kid as a coach and as a parent, right? Don't sit there and say, hey, now nah, my kid's good enough now. Well, this is what he's telling you. In order to get it awkward, you need to apply it, especially if he wants to go to Georgia Tech. Next slide. So recruiting breakdown, it's the easiest we can do it, okay? When I had a chance to sit down with uh, Ken Norton, when he was at USC and Pete Carroll, right? They had a uh, five-point rating system, and I used this everywhere I went after that, okay? Five, All-American. Coach, we recruit fives. Okay, what's a five? First-round draft pick. I want guys that can play in the NFL. Those are the kind of guys we're going after. Some coaches will say that. Do you think your kid can play in the NFL? If the answer is yes, we're going to offer them, okay? Four, potential starter, okay? Three, a role player, special teams, all right? Two might be a gray shirt or possibly red shirt. Even the same thing with the three, kind of depending on where you're at. One is a non-offer guy. Okay, we're not going to entertain it. There's no chance with what I've seen, that kid developing into a guy that we can eventually offer. Okay? Here's some of the uh, recruiting resources that you can use. Uh, just be weary. Okay, some of these will charge. For instance, NCSA, they got pretty expensive packages. But as a high school coach, field level is good, it's free. Okay, if they want to get a premium package as a kid, that's on their own discretion with parent. But Twitter is one of the best ways that everyone's using now to get information out. So as a high school coach, Twitter is amazing. Get your kids good quality film on there with their little bio on there. And you can tag any coach you feel that is a good fit for. For instance, as a coach, you want to have, meet with your seniors going in. Actually, they're a senior year, so as a junior, give me your top 10. And explain to them why. Uh, have him explain to you why this is in the top 10 schools. You as a coach, you can sit there and say off of what the information you've got. All right, so this school may not offer you. You're not going to be a good fit here. Let's take a look at schools that are a good fit for you. And then it's on you as a coach to help. If he sends it from a player, they're not going to look at it. They send it from the coach. Okay, not only the coach, but again, back to what I said earlier, that particular area. So if it's Coach Joe Schmo from Georgia, he's a corner coach, right? And he has your area, tag him in it. Don't tag the head coach. Don't tag Kirby Smart. He's not going to look at it. Right? So be smart how you do it. Next slide, please. Okay? So you need to register with NCAA Clearinghouse if you're going to play at that level. That includes D3, okay, D2, Division I, AA, Division I. If you're going the NAI route, same thing. NAI compliance is very comparable to NCAA. NAI is, is going to be a lot more challenging than NCAA. For whatever reason, I had the hardest time dealing with NAI compliance, but the faster you can create a profile, get your information in there, the better it will be. College coaches will come in and say, hey, what's this NCAA clearing house ID number? You as a coach, you should have that ready to go. Coach, here's his NCAA ID number. Here's an extra copy of his transcripts. Here's his first quarter grades, our first semester grades going into his junior year. Coach, here's his highlight film. Okay, you just want to click on the link whenever you get the free time. 
Coach, here's the link for his test scores. I sent it to you electronically before you walked in the door. So as a college coach, hey, Coach, you already had it all set up for me. Now he can spend more time, okay, talking football with you, letting you know about camps, letting you know about other things versus you're scrounging around for 30 minutes trying to get all that stuff, okay? Next slide. Summer camps, satellite camps, best way to get exposure, okay? If you haven't sold a coach yet off of your film, you go out there and find those schools that might be a good fit for him, take him to a Georgia, take him to Georgia Tech, take him to Duke, take him to Mercer, take him to LaGrange, whatever level he is, make sure you as a coach or a parent, you advocate that, get him out there. Satellite camps are a great one, okay? Kennesaw State has a big satellite camp. Every coach will be there. LaGrange will have a big satellite camp. All the coaches will be there. Mercer will have a satellite camp. Every coach will be there. And it's broken down, okay, by position groups at different times. Okay, and they do that for good reason. So if I'm an offensive lineman, and there's 75 other kids at that camp, but there's 56 colleges there, I'm going to get a good look from that. You may grow inches. And as a coach, walk around. Walk around, give out a card, business card. Hey, coach, you know, I'm, I'm here with Chess TA here. I'm here with, with Gainesville here. I'm here with Riverside. I just want to let you know, hey, number uh, 573, that's my offensive guard that you need to take a look at. All right, coach, I'll definitely do that. Okay, heighten their awareness. They may not catch it all the time because of the amount of numbers. But you get out there and you, you hustle and get that information to those coaches. All right, next slide, please. Highlight films, okay, this is big. You want to put your most big, biggest, most impactful plays first. I had, a, uh, as a college coach, my rule of thumb was the five clip rule. If you didn't get my heart rate elevated to five clips, I turned it off. So you want to put your best plays first. Don't just put kind of a leg tackle or jumping in on a, on a game tackle. That's not a highlight. Big blow plays in the backfield. Big 65 yard runs. Big home run posts. Big scramble plays for a big run. Uh, big time hits on special teams. Big turnovers, interceptions. Put your best plays first. Because as a college coach, if I'm going to invest $10,000 into you, half a million dollars into you, $1.5 million in scholarship, I need to know that you're an investable kid. This kid has to be a guy that can contribute right away or the year after. Okay, if that makes any sense. All right? As a coach, make a database. Go out there and get email addresses from the recruiting coordinators, recruiting assistant, offensive analyst, defensive analyst for FBS. Find out who has that specific territory. Again, DB's coach at Georgia has Hall County, for example. Get his information. FCS, do the same thing. Division two, you can pretty much send it almost to any coach, and they'll get it to that specific position. Coach. NAI, same thing. D3, same thing. Okay, sit down and have a conversation with your kids. Okay, give me 10 schools, but make sure they know why. Don't just put 10 schools because I like watching them play on Saturdays, right? Give me the 10 schools that you feel you can be successful at, that you and your parents sat down and talked about first, and then you brought it to me, and we'll go through it. And maybe it's me, you, and dad, or me, you, mom, and dad, or me, you, and mom, our decision maker. Let's go through that together because it's important. It's transparency. If the parents are involved in it, it makes everything easier. They don't want to be surprised just as so much as you don't want to get surprised. Okay? Take your kids to camps. Very important. Don't just sit there in the summer, you know, taking your paid time off. All right? Maybe you guys have some football things that you got going on. Figure out a way to get your kids to some camps. Let them be seen. Okay? Again, include parents, guardians, community members, whoever the decision makers are. Include them in the entire process. It's extremely important. Okay? Nothing bigger than, than a community coming together and saying, hey, this kid's going here. I'm going to go catch a couple of his games. Or I can't wait to go watch him play here. Or I can't wait to go see you, you over here. Or whatever the case may be. So if you get the community involved, you get the parents involved, you get the school involved, it makes it that much more special for the kid. It makes it that much bigger for your community and your school. All right. Any questions that may come up, my email address is ngarrett, two R's and two T's at RiversideMilitary.com. My cell number is 805-336-8893. If you have any questions about what we cover, feel free to reach out. Okay, I helped a bunch of kids in Hall County, outside of Hall County, teams we played near Atlanta, kids in California, kids in Florida. I'm constantly trying to help kids. It's very, very important because they do need help. And I hope this information I gave you today uh, for you high school coaches and your parents and, and anybody else in the community out there, I hope you got really kind of the nuts and bolts of what it's all about. 
to make it a situation for your programs to get them better, to heighten awareness for your coaches and the people involved there, and, and ultimately your kids at the end of the day. Thank you.